This is a quick painting tutorial for Flight Sim Aircraft in which the paint kit supplied, or the blank textures in this case, uh, are not given in layered format. Um, this example is from the Carinado uh, 185 Skywagon, and I'm going to show you some techniques I use in Adobe Photoshop that enable you to make some pretty nice repaints even though you don't have layers to work with. So what we're starting off with here is the basic blank white Coronado texture. Uh, it's a very nicely done set of textures. There's lots of modeling and detailing. You see the rivets, panel lines. There's beautiful shading, very subtle in this. Uh, and I'll show you the way that I work with that um, to create a repaint that's pretty believable. Um, the, the one layer that I've already brought in for my example here is the stripes layer. Um, and this is basically uh, everything that I'm going to paint on the side of the airplane. Uh, you've got the end number and, and some detailing here that's part of the paint. Now what you see when I first activate this layer, I'm in normal mode and uh, essentially the stripes are just flat fields of color that cover up the existing Carinado textures. Um, the trick that I use to blend these, make them look more realistic, is to work with blend modes go up here to normal and I'm going to go down and make the stripes a color burn. And you see right away there's a big difference. Um, by making it a color burn everything that's color uh, is going to multiply by whatever is underneath it. So we're going to get areas where like where it was shaded down here below the window under the wing is a little darker. It gets lighter as you come to the top of the plane here where the, the highlight is happening. Um, and that looks pretty good even by itself. Um, you can see things like rivet heads uh, up around here. Uh, you can see some detailing here in the top. Um, let me get in a little closer there. See how we've maintained um, the layers down below it. We've actually got some shading and modeling going on. And then uh, in addition to that, I'm going to also add a uh, highlight layer by choosing my background here, dragging it down to create a new layer, moving it up above the stripes, and then I'm going to set the mode, the blend mode, to lighten. You won't see any difference right away, but then if you go up here under edit, excuse me, under uh, adjustments to brightness and contrast, bring that in. As I make it darker, turn the brightness down. I'm going to turn it down almost to minus 100, minus 94, 94 there. And I'm going to pick up the contrast on it. And you can see what's happening is it's starting to affect only parts of the image. So that's plus 77 on the contrast, minus 94 on the brightness. Hit OK. And if we go to, to normal mode here, you'll see Basically, we've just created this really dark layer in which only the highlights, the rivet heads, the uh, highlight on top of the aircraft from the lighting, those are the only light areas. And then by setting it to lighten, they essentially just add that lightness on top of the stripes that we have down below. And then if I want to uh, make that more subtle, I can always dial back the opacity on that lighten, on that uh, highlight layer. I like to keep it at about 80% or so. And then the other trick that I use, and this is really helpful when you have paints that span multiple texture sheets, um, is I'll take my stripes here. I'm going to add an adjustment layer. So go up under the layer menu and hit new adjustment layer and I'm going to do a hue saturation adjustment. Let's hit OK. And for right now, I'm just going to hit OK to 0, 0, and 0. And you see we've got a new hue saturation adjustment layer there. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and mouse over the boundary between stripes and our adjustment layer and click so that only our, our adjustment layer only affects the stripes and not the uh, base texture. Then I'll double click on the HSB icon there and watch carefully down here in the red of the stripes. As I adjust the saturation, I can take add or take away color saturation and make that much brighter red or more realistically usually a little less saturated red. And then I can come down to my lightness layer. 
and make it much lighter or much darker, but I don't think there's much to be gained by making it darker. But as we add lightness to it, you can see more detail coming through. It's covering up less and less of the texture down below it. I can see this being really useful, uh, especially the lightness, if you want to emulate a faded paint job, something that's been out in the weather for quite a while. Great thing about using an adjustment layer for this, and hit OK, is you can see, turn it on. It's a subtle difference, but it is a difference. You can take this adjustment layer then and drag it onto all of your other texture sheets that, you have, that have layers as well and replicate this exact look across multiple uh, sheets so you can get your reds and your blues and whatever consistent. Let me double click this again. Let's see, what was I doing here? Oh, I was going to show that uh, you can also use the hue at the top, which I didn't touch before. You can actually use that to change the color of the overall layer. So if I wanted a nice sort of a gold color, hit OK to that. It's non-destructive. If I turn it off, I can see I still have my red below. And if I double click, I can still go back and change this back to the red it was before. So you can see it's a really useful non-destructive tool way to play around with colors, get things dialed in exactly the way you want them. And then once you've got that done, you just save that file, uh, convert it to DDS, and you're ready to rock and roll. So hopefully that helped a little bit, gave you some new ideas for things you can do with repaints when there's nothing but a single blank texture sheet available.